What's going on y'all? I'm Czar, and in this video we're going to be reviewing the Warm Audio WA8000. And before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Front End Audio for making this review possible. Now, I know I'm late to the party with this mic, but it really wasn't on my radar until a studio here in Nashville let us borrow their Sony C800G. So this sparked my curiosity on how does the WA8000 sound compared to a Sony C800G. And so I reached out to Friend and Audio and they sent me the WA8000 to review. Now I will have a video coming soon comparing the WA8000 to the Sony C800G, so stay tuned to my channel for that. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on the WA8000. Let's take a closer look. So here is the WA8000. This is the case that it comes in, which is a pretty large case. And inside we've got, of course, everything that you would need for a tube mic. Start with the power supply. I like this blue LED on here. It's just a little different from the typical red switch that I see on most tube mics. I was curious if this was specific to the WA8000, and it does say it on there, WA8000 tube condenser microphone. Uh, but looking at this power supply, or looking at warm site, uh, this does look like the same a power supply that's used for their other two mics, excluding uh, the WA251. That power supply looks different. They got your shock mount, power cable. We got a seven pin mic cable. And of course, we've got the microphone. It's on the front. We've got cardioid omni switch, warm audio logo on the front. On the back of the heat sink, we have another warm audio logo. And Interestingly, this also comes with a windscreen, which I don't know. I've never seen anyone use a C800G or this mic with the windscreen, but you get one included. Inside the mic, we've got a what Warm is calling a custom K67 inspired all brass capsule. Uh, not sure what they mean by inspired. I kind of scratched my head at that because... To me, that can mean that it's not a K67 capsule. It's just a capsule that's inspired by a K67 capsule. So, uh, got to be careful reading marketing sometimes. Uh, I like that this, on the bottom of the mic, this notch here that you see at the top, that really allows easy access to connect the mic cable, and I really like that. And other, I went and checked my other two mics I have, and they do not have this, so... Definitely a nice little uh, touch here. Just makes it really easy to connect a to connect the microphone cable because especially with two mics, you do not want to get any of those pins bent, of course. Also inside the mic, uh, we've got a, a new old stock uh, 6AU6 tube. And we also have a Lundahl transformer, which you would also know just by looking at the back here. It literally says Lundahl transformer, which I haven't seen a transformer branded on a microphone before. All right, let's get into how this sounds. All right, so we're going to check out the WA8000 on some rap vocals. And actually, all the examples I'm going to let you hear here is on vocals. I've never seen anyone use a Sony C800G for anything other than vocals, so I really wasn't interested in trying this mic on guitar or anything else. But we've got some rap vocals and singing vocals here. Uh, this is a artist named Virghost, like myself. He's from Memphis and now in Nashville. And uh, the mic pre that we used for this was a Mic Tech MPA201, which is a British style preamp. I would define it as colored. It's not a Neve 1073 clone, but uh, it does have that British character sound. All right, uh, let's take a listen to this and see what this WA8000 sounds like. Fuck it if he dies and he dies like Rocky Four. Off with his head like Joffrey Doe. They like go see dope, but he cocky though. All they talking, but you still can't stop me though. Nigga Tennessee go, I run there. That's 901, I'm from there. So nice on the track, I done that. Nigga, that's ice on the beat 100. No one stay fly, beat the drip drop. Put it on IG, TikTok. I be in my bag like Zibla. I know that I'm a lot, I'm a big shot. Outcast swag with the wristwatch. Fuck your little math on the big guac. Put it in my bag like Zibla. I know that I'm a lot, I'm a big shot. 
All right, so of course no other processing on that vocal except for a little bit of reverb that had a little bit of delay on it. Uh, so I think this was a good vocal. Uh, if I was mixing this, if I was sent this to mix, I would be happy with it. Uh, but let's dissect it a little more. Uh, the low mids I felt were a little muddy and the high end was a little harsh. Those S's were uh, poking through and I feel like I want to hear just a little bit more high end uh, clarity on it as well. Uh, this song is called Ziploc. It is out and available on all platforms now. Uh, so if you like it, definitely go check it out. All right, let's move on to another example. All right, so another rap example here. This is the Rap Girl uh, artist here in Nashville. And the mic pre that we used on this take is the Phoenix Audio Ascent EQ. And this is a mic pre that is transformless on the input. It's got a transformer on the output. Uh, but the way that I normally use it is on the more cleaner side. So I don't crank the output for that uh, colored saturation that you can get. I just leave the output at about 11 or 12 o'clock and get more of a cleaner sound on the input. All right, let's take a listen to this. Yeah. Mm. Rap girl. Hey, a medallion for my team, a medallion for myself. My neck ran out of room, I put the medallion on my belt. For those of you who snoop, here I am, I'm doing well. Design on my shirt, not the panda one who yelled. All right, so on this one, again, this is a, another uh, good vocal. I think this came out better than the last one as far as what I hear that may need to be corrected. I really don't hear anything with this vocal that I would want to uh, immediately reach for an EQ or do anything. The S's weren't poking out. Uh, the low mids was clear. The whole vocal was clear to me. Uh, so really impressed with how she sounded on the WA-8000 on this take. All right, let's take a listen to another example. All right, so here is some singing vocals. This is a vocal from Simone Curry. And the mic pre we used on this one was again, or back to the uh, Mic Tech MPA 201. Uh, no other processing on the vocal, but I got a little bit of reverb on it. All right, let's check it out. I want it to be real to me, but it stares at me like a star from the earth. Must be real if it shines so bright, but here I am, still cold in the dead of night. And that's what I feel about it. That's what I say about love sometimes That's what I know about it That's what I say about love sometimes Careful who you let into your company I know you got feelings but it ain't complete now All right, so for this vocal, again, another good vocal uh, the S's were poking out to me, uh, making that high end a little harsh. Uh, but other than that, I think this was a really good uh, vocal take and doesn't require, if any, uh, EQing at all. All right, uh, let's get into some final thoughts on the WA-8000. So let me start with my expectations for this mic as well as my experience with warm audio uh, so far. Uh, so I've owned two warm audio pieces in the past, uh, the warm audio WA-2A, which is their LA-2A clone, and their Pultec EQ clone. And while I think that warm audio is good at the price point, or sounds good at the price point, I felt that I can spend a couple hundred more or spend a little bit more and get something that performs a little bit better, uh, which is why... I sold uh, what I had. Uh, the WA-2A I sold, and I was going to get the Audioscape LA-2A, which I felt performed a little better, uh, but I ended up just continuing to save and getting a Manly ELOP. Uh, with the Pultec, I sold that and got the West Audio uh, LC-EQP, which is their uh, Pultec. So with that being said, that's kind of my, was my expectations for the WA-8000 is that it probably sounds good, but you know, for a little bit more, you could probably get something that performs a little better. But the WA-8000 is really in a price point of its own. And when I say spend a little more and get something a little better, I'm only referring to Sony C800G mics. I'm not referring to, to all mics. 
So if you look at just the Sony C800G style mics, there's really not that many on the market. So let's run them down in their prices. An authentic Sony C800G with sales tech is going to set you back uh, probably a little over 11000 Below that, you've got the Golden Age Premier. I forget what their model is, but uh, the Golden Age Premier 800 is uh, 4000 Below that, you've got the <clears throat> JJ Audio Akita, which is 1950 and then you've got the Warm Audio WA8000, which is 1200 And then below that, you've got the Advanced Audio C800MT, I think is the model. And they're, they're right at $800. So you got $800, then $1,200, and then from $1,200 up to $2,000. So it's a large jump there. So the Warm Audio is really sitting at a price point on its own. So I haven't heard the JJ Audio, but... You know, as far as spending a little more to get something that performs a little bit better, within that $1,200 price point, it's going to be a nice steep jump uh, to get up to something like the JJ Audio. And also with that said, out of those mics I just named, the Golden Age Premier and the Warm Audio are the only ones that have that C800G look. Uh, the Advanced Audio and the JJ Audio I mean, they just look like, um, I mean, tube condenser microphones. I mean, they don't look like a Sony C800G. So, I mean, I think if you're spending money to get a Sony C800G style microphone, you're going to want it to look the part, I feel. Uh, so just throwing that out there. So I had a session with the WA8000 after I finished recording this review, but I wanted to jump in here because you know I feel like it really helped me determine more of what the mic sounds like because I got to compare it to some other mics. And so let's talk about the sound. I feel that the WA8000 doesn't have uh, the character and vibe that I expected it to have. I definitely say it's more of a modern sounding mic versus vintage. It doesn't have that low mid warmth and doesn't have the detail in the low mids as well uh, that I wanted. But not having low mid warmth, that's not a bad thing. A lot of times you add warmth, you sacrifice clarity. And, you know, there's very few mics and mic pre's that I've come across that gives you both warmth and clarity. And I believe that's, you know, I'd say that's probably why people like to use Sony C800Gs with Neve 1073s because a, a good 1073 or 1073 clone is going to give you some warm low mids. So if you're adding that to, you know, what I'd say is a more neutral sounding low mid microphone, you're going to get that warmth there with everything else that you get from the mic. But I feel the WA8000 has a very balanced low mids and then it just goes up from there, giving you mids and highs. And I describe it more of a bright, uh, more on the brighter side, but thankfully not uh, too bright. And does it sound like a Sony C800G? Uh, my opinion, no. But uh, the best way I can describe it is like a Halloween costume. It's like, do you look exactly like this character? No. Uh, but I can look at you and tell what you're trying to be. And that's the way I feel about the WA8000. At a tenth of the price, I'm not mad at this mic at all. And while I really am sick of seeing clones of gear, all these 1176s, LA2As just repeatedly coming out year after year, uh, I will say that what I like about this is that Warm Audio has cloned a mic that not many people have cloned. Uh, so there's not that many of these style mics on the market, which I think is a good thing which you know, I feel is a good reason to clone something when there's not a lot of something. Uh, but uh, that's my review of the WA8000. Definitely comment. Let me know what you think of it. And uh, don't forget, this mic is available at frontendaudio.com, and I'll have a link in the description for you to check that out and learn more about it. If you like this video, I appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to continue to see content from me, then you know what to do. All right, any questions, comments, let me know, and I'll catch y'all next time. I invite you to check out my podcast, The Faders Up Podcast, a podcast about pro audio and beyond. Season three is now underway, and in this season, we'll be doing a lot of topics requested by listeners. So if you have a topic you want to hear discussed on the podcast, email us, DM us, or join us in our Facebook group, Faders Up Podcast, and let us know. And if you haven't checked out the podcast yet, I have a link in the description that'll take you to the page.